Welcome to another episode of last week's Comics of the Day. I have a short stack, but I also have a surprise at the end of this. I'm going to start quickly with The Many Deaths of Lila Star. This, I believe, was two years ago, and then the hardcover came out um, in 2023, which I did not get at the time. I, I, I had a job when this came out. I just didn't buy it for some reason. I thought the single issues were enough. And then I kept thinking about it throughout the year, and I'm like, yeah, I should get that. And by that point, I didn't have a job. So I got it now. Um, it's it's a fantastic series. Basically, Death is fired from her job and joins Earth as a mortal. And it's her interactions with a guy who, at some point in his life, is going to discover immortality, and that's why she was let go from her job. But... It's just incredibly well done. Story is phenomenal. There's nothing else quite like it. Uh, this creative team is now currently doing Rare Flavors, which I'm also very much enjoying, but both of them are great. I will keep an eye um, on both of them for probably the rest of their careers. Um, yeah, I was about to mention Batman, or Detective Comics, I guess, which I got the first issue of because of Rom and... But then I didn't get more. So, at least as far as their independent stuff goes, I will continue to check it out. Superhero stuff. Eh, it's just not always my thing. But this is great. Highly recommended. So for single issues, I started with Ghost Machine. I, at some point in the past, and I think it might have been Three Jokers that flipped me from... I was certainly a fan of Jeff Johns at some point in the past. I think it was the Green Lantern era. I liked most of what he was doing. I also saw that it was kind of repetitive, at least as far as... I don't know. He has some writing ticks, right? And by the time Three Jokers came out, I'm like, no, this is just terrible. It, it sucks, it's ridiculous. And uh, Doomsday Clock then started after that, and I'm like, I know it's going to be late. And I don't know whether or not it's going to be good by the end of it, so I don't want to invest more than a year in buying this thing. And so I waited until issue 10 or 11, and I'm like, if it's still praised, if people still think uh, Doomsday Clock is good near the end, then I'll get a collection of it. And uh, people did not, and I knew that I wasn't going to care for it. So I have largely ignored Jeff Johns and um, more power to him because I was just talking about how superhero creators, I want them, once I'm a fan, to go create something that they own. And he's been doing that at Image for a couple of years. Like I said, I've been ignoring it because I just don't think uh, his current stuff is as good as what he used to be. Or maybe he was always like this and my tastes have changed. I don't know. But, this is the start of his new shared universe. He's got all of these people, and I generally like those guys. The guy who put me over the top, though, is Tomasi. And that is the single issue, the, the single story in this issue that I enjoyed most. So here we have a table of contents. You know what they don't have, though? Page numbers at the bottom of any of this. Like, how is everyone this stupid? So we have a bunch of stories here, right? A bunch of new characters. There is this sequence here with his guy. Where is it? So it's kind of a framing device of this guy telling a story about this guy. And where is it? Oh, there's this thing here, which is sort of... I'm glad that I read this because I had thought about doing something very similar to this in a script that I was going to revisit. And I'm like, oh no, this is just super annoying and I hate it. And I don't want to subject other people to this. But uh, it's basically a story, it's snippets of stories that haven't been told. And so it's I don't know, supposed to be enticement. It's um, maybe hints at a larger world, but I'm like, oh, no, I, I hate, I hate. I hate all of this. I have to rethink that scene I was going to write. 
but there's there's a bunch of new characters. There's a bunch of stories in here. We have different creative teams. It is mostly by Jeff Johns. And we get this one here, which is sort of a Fantastic Four-ish family sci-fi story. This, I think, is the best. Uh, we've got this other one by Tomasi, which I don't think is quite as good. And then we've got more Jeff Johns, and like, I, I don't care. I don't care. This uh, Hyde Street stuff is Twilight Zone-ish. It's, it's not even ish. It's like hardcore leaning into Twilight Zone material, and it just uh, falls flat to me. I, I do not care. I honestly don't care about any of this except the possible Rocket Fellers. Um, I might grab the first issue of that, but um, more power to them. I hope it works out. It's just I won't be along for this particular ride. Next we have the last issue of Damn Them All and it ends well. And I don't know what else to say about it. There's um... Plenty of magic, as always. Uh, some people get their comeuppance. We get resolution. We get uh, a nice somewhat epilogue. But uh, things don't go particularly, particularly well for that guy. He gets a hammer to the face. But um, it it's a good ending. I would have continued reading it. I know it was initially a five or six issue series and then they called it an ongoing and it only made it to 12 so like I don't know I don't know could have been longer it was good I recommend it I don't know what else to say lastly for the physical books is Our Bones Dust this came out the week prior I didn't grab it at the time I wasn't super impressed with the first issue I was intrigued it was nice. It was certainly something new that I hadn't seen before, but I wasn't really hooked. And then Berg was praising this at the comic shop, so this would have been two weeks ago. And I'm like, alright, I'll throw it in my pull box as I was leaving the store, and uh, I'll buy it next week. And thankfully I did, because it was such a small week for physical stuff. And uh, this is better than the first issue. The one thing... <laughs> I want to point out this sequence here. So this whole sequence, right? We've got this kid. He's running left, right, still facing to the right, running left, right. And we get to here, the wide shot, and suddenly he's running right to left. And I'm like, what? Did you flip the panel? Is this intentional? Because this, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Anyway. The rest of it's good. There's these alien things, and uh, there's this guy who was in the first issue. I can't remember if the black, creepy insect thing was as well. Uh, <laughs> I usually flip through my comics before I start reading, and I thought these guys were chewing on soap before, but uh, there's, there's an explanation as to what that is. So there's these two things, and uh, this is not exactly an alien, but it's very alien-like. It's creepy as hell, and then these two things get into a fight, and it just, it it's nuts. Because this starts to happen, and it's just like, ugh. Yikes. And face, oh, Jesus. This is thankfully a four-issue series. I will probably get the subsequent two issues. Um, like I said, this is, oh, you can see, spoilers? Some of that happens. Um... Yeah, this is, a, this is a better issue than the first one, in my opinion. And uh, I want to see where things go now. So last year, I backed the Kickstarter for Zorro from Sean Gordon Murphy. Uh, the first issue came out a few weeks ago at the same time that I was sent a digital copy of that first issue. And I didn't read it until this week because I had really nothing else going on. I used to be more of a reader of digital comics and then I gave up around 2011 at the start of New 52 and the launch of IDW Ninja Turtles. I went back to comic shops at that point. So like the late aughts and 2010, 2011, I was reading digital and then I stopped. And I really haven't done it since. Um, I just don't, I, I'm not a fan of the experience. I would rather have something in my hand. 
Anyway. They put out a preview of the comic. Um, I don't remember how long ago, but there's a preview for the comic, and it was okay. I was mildly concerned, but the money had already been spent, and I'm like, uh, okay, we'll see. And so it was these opening pages. I think it ends here. I think it ends here. So that's the opening sequence for the issue, and then time jumps after a little bit more. I think it's 20 years. So the daughter from the opening sequence is now working for the cartel that killed her father. Uh, her brother, we will see in a minute, um, has not spoken since then. I like, I like her. The, there's some amazing, I'm gonna point out one particular um, panel here in a minute, but there's just amazing posing, uh, blocking, staging going on, like all of this. I love y'all. This is the panel that I wanted to highlight. So we've got um, everyone in this room, right? So we've got these two over here. This guy's doing the talking. At first I thought he was the main guy, uh, but it's actually this guy who barely speaks in the background. Uh, this guy. There's, there's a, a lot being conveyed by posing and gesture. Uh, this guy's hand is on her shoulder. But the guy that I particularly enjoy is this guy here uh, in the shorts and this uh, print shirt making a drink while this somewhat tense conversation is going on. Uh, this guy's kind of accusing her and this guy's standing up for her. So it's... Uh, I love this panel more than I can express. Um... It really, I think, just shows the, the skill, the talent of Sean Gordon Murphy. And then, so after this, it kicks into some action. We get uh, some sword fighting. This is the brother here. Look at this panel. Good God. Uh, we then get another one of my favorites is these playing foxes down here. Look how happy these foxes are. Look at this guy. So good. All right, so the, like I said, I was mildly concerned based on the preview, and uh, this negates that, swages that. Um, it's, it's a phenomenal first issue. It has all of the, uh, the action, the emotional impactfulness that I'm looking for. It's as good as his White Knight stuff. It is better, I would say, than plot holes. But this is a fantastic first issue. I'm now looking forward to the subsequent issues. I don't know if I will do videos for the rest of the series or not. But uh, because it's such a small week and I have one more digital comic to show off, I wanted to at least talk about this. Lastly, for the week, Gabe, a friend of both Dan and I, put out a new digital comic, Parsec Gazette. He's on Substack. He's on Patreon. He's on Kofi. If there's a digital platform, he's probably on it, promoting himself, showing off art. He launched this first issue, Parsec Gazette, and it is about this uh, carrot in a mech suit, and it's fantastic. This is, surprisingly, my pick of the week. I had the most fun reading this. I mean, look at, look at this, right? And then this. Oh, it's so good. Look at this. Look at this guy. It's so amazing. I loved it. This is the one problem I, that I had. So this this image is maybe at the wrong resolution. I don't know. I did ask him a separate question because included with this is a puzzle. I'd never heard of a nonogram before, but uh, I, I've, I've spent... <laughs> since this came out Sunday, it is currently Saturday, so I've spent a week working on nonograms since solving this. I think I solved it. I did ask him for an answer key and he hasn't gotten back to me yet, but uh, so there, there's a comic uh, and this you can just increase the size to, to view it. Um, I would think that should be fixed, but uh, the comic is great. It's a heck of a lot of fun. I mean, these guys here in the foreground, it's just, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, here he's talking about what is upcoming. Uh, there's this fun page, flip a coin, and then there's a fake ad here at the back. 
it's just incredibly well put together. I loved it. It was the most fun that I had reading a comic this week. And there's a puzzle included that kept me entertained for even longer. So it's just, uh, again, it's my pick of the week. It's the best thing that I read this week. So that is everything that I got this week. I've already declared Parsec Gazette as my pick of the week. Of the physical stuff, it would be damn them all because it's certainly not Ghost Machine and Our Bones did not come out this week. So that's everything that I got this week. Um, I'll be doing some additional reading of trades, primarily amulets. I'm still waiting for Volume 9 to come out, and it turns out I never read Volume 8, so surprise. Like I said, that's everything that I got this week. I get everything from a local co comic shop, except for, obviously, the digital books. But um, if you don't know where yours is, you can use this URL to find the one closest to you. Thanks for watching.